It's everyone mixed together with broccoli. Are you fucking serious? <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, blind wine tasting yet again. Uh, so we've got, again, another wonderful suite of wines from our good friends at Sometimes Always. Uh, we purchase all the wines from these guys and we're passing the savings on to you. If you join our Discord channel, there's a 10% discount code which you can chuck on all the wines we try on this show today. So you can enjoy them at home just like we did or not enjoy them or just be curious. Who knows? That's what this whole blind wine thing's about. So without too much mucking around, let's get back into it. Numero uno, we have a delectable, delicious looking red that is actually jumping out of the glass, to be honest. You just swirl it and it kind of like... Red, uh, it's got a little bit of sort of a uh, clear claret color to it as opposed to some of the thicker reds that we're gonna get into. It does look like the majority of red wines today. Lovely, smoky, whole bunchy thing. Ooh, bright red fruit, kind of that red currenty thing. Red cherry, a bit of straws. Oh yes, oh yes, oh I'm salivating. That's a 12 bagger, right there. 12 bottles please, and I'll spend 35 bucks a bottle. The, like 2021, the meme was, I think everyone, every white wine is Chardonnay. I think 2022, I've evolved to thinking that every red wine is Pinot Noir. So I think this is Pinot Noir. Yeah, pretty cool. Um, nothing over the moon. There is this kind of like bitter astringency, I think probably coming from the, the stems. Maybe they weren't perfectly ripe. They might've been a bit green, but it doesn't taste too green. It has this weird kind of just like stemmy astringency. Wouldn't surprise me if this was like a traditional producer that is doing like a new school style of wine, but done like really well. They're, they're, this is all class, but with a little bit of like radical thrown in for good measure. Yeah, brilliant. One number two, like the last one was talking about being that sort of like clearer red color. This has got a little bit more depth to it, a little bit of darker fruit, a little bit more apple black currant than just straight apple juice. Definitely a lot of a lot more black, but there's that nice like blood, crimson, Dracula vibe to it. Okay. Definitely a big wine. Very classy, very well made. I'd, I'm not too sure that the sort of more contemporary style of you know, natural wines and the more luscious, juicy things like wine number one, this is not really a part of that at all. Um, this is more harking back to more traditionalist times. Yeah, so a little bit tartar um, is sort of making me like purse my lips a little bit and sort of, uh, the boys describe it as like umptuousness. I think that's what they're talking about when they're talking about umptuousness, they're like, I really like this one. I really, really like this one. Big, beautiful blue and black fruit in the middle of it is delicious. Definitely what you want from like this big full bodied style of wine. Grenache sort of area kind of thing. Maybe a little bit of a whole bunch of Grenache. It's not super stemmy, but there is that little bit of like, sometimes like the sourness I think in there can be from like the whole bunch. So like the stems and the leaves of the fruit. I would expect you to be charged at least $55 a bottle for this. Uh, time has been taken with this wine. A lot of money has been thrown at this. So if it's any less than that, it's probably gonna be a relative bargain. Number three, definitely got some lighter characters here. Almost like it looks like there's a little bit of like purpley thing going on, but yeah, definitely that kind of nice fragrant area. A little bit more closed, a little bit dusty. That's cool. Not all just sweet, it's a little bit savory. A juicy red color that you get in wine where like I'm a big soft boy wine, red wine drinker in the sense that I don't want the, Brendo talks about being like a, a masochist when it comes to wine. Like he wants it to hurt him and stuff like that. I don't know, I want it to give me a hug. Red Rippers. The, the Allen's Dolly, formerly known as Redskins, rightfully changed. That's what this smells like, 100%. And I'm gonna go six bottles. This reminds me, and this is, this is a real Australian thing, home ice cream. Remember home ice cream was the ones that, that you know, ran the doorbell thing, sort of the bell as they drive down the street. The raspberry splits, raspberry splits are always, you know, in our household. The red bit that you try to like pry off with your teeth before you get to the vanilla center because the vanilla center was always far superior than the icy pole uh, war that was constantly uh, in my mouth. Again, 2022, the year of Pinot Noir. Um, so Pinot again. Yeah, like really cool, sour, great, but also super bright and like bubble gummy sort of flavor. 45 bucks a bottle, I reckon. Yeah, really good fun. Really, really good fun. Again, probably another six bottles. Not for a sell. This is not a seller or wine. I wouldn't be selling this at all because it's so much fun now. I'd probably drink it too quickly. This doesn't look like grape juice. Oh, it doesn't look like fruit juice. Sorry, this looks like red wine. It's dark, it's black. It looks like it's gonna be um, big and strong, let's see. Even more black than that kind of Syrah thing that we were dealing with earlier. Mariana's trench of red wines. Like stewed fruit, 
you know, uh, I think stewed is the word they often use when they don't want to say cooked. Yeah, it smells like expensive wooden furniture, which is my favorite way to describe red wine that no one else uses. The oakiest on this is extravagant, but restrained, if that makes any sense at all. Honestly, mate, that tastes like wine number two has been blended with wine number three. High acid, driven and drawn out, but oaky. Still this kind of cooked oxidative thing going on. Makes me think it's heading in that direction of like being a Syrah or a Shiraz or something like that. It's got a little bit of spice to it, but it still, does still have this really nice bold, yeah, fruit flavor in there. Uh, but really delightful wine. Uh, I reckon it's gonna be kind of a bit pricey, yeah, maybe like $42, I'm not sure. Really, really good wine. Hopefully it's you know, in that $40 bracket. Um, yeah, I like it. I think I'll, if you're into this kind of style of wine, of like a GSM, like medium to medium full bodied style of wine, you'll probably be very, very happy with this and just hopefully it's a really good wine. Moving on to uh, wine number five. Uh, it's, it's a very, very deep colored white wine. Big aromatic Gewurz, Traminary, grape variety, musket, something like that in that ballpark. Seen it many times before. Of course, you know, Unico Zello influence here. Like it feels like esoterica and all those kind of things. Yeah, really nice. Like a warm mouth feel to it would be my way of saying. It doesn't feel thin or like acidic, like other white wines that are really crystal clear. Tannin's really cool. There's like musky thing that runs through the middle, like a like soapy jasmine tea thing, quite nice. But I think it's one of those orange wines that needs a leaves a little bit to be desired. It is like beautiful and floral and that tannin structure is fantastic, but I'm just looking for a little bit more interest in just pure aromatics. This is awesome. This is, yeah, um, I have a feeling I already know what it is, but um, uh, it's showing all the typical musket uh, aroma. It is crystal clear and brilliance and clarity. I'm not too sure if it's actually been filtered or it's just been settled over a really long period of time and it's just had a long time in cask. But yeah, not ridiculously over the moon about it, but it has a purpose. This wine has purpose. Color's awesome. You've got that little licks of like you can kind of see through it, but it still gets quite dark in that red sphere. It feels like wine number one. You know, it feels that, like this sort of Grenache ripe style, but not overly heady. It's actually pretty closed. With, with things like this, if you sent your child to school with a pop top full of this, no teacher would look at them sideways. They wouldn't be like, why is that child drinking red wine? They'd be like, apple black currant juice. That's what that looks like to me. Lots of like very violet, like really kind of like purple flowers. Does this have alcohol in it? Are you sure? It tastes like apple black currant juice. That is not wine. That is juice. That is genuine juice. There's no there's no booze in that. You pulled a Swifty on us, haven't you, Lucky? You bastard. Whoa! Is this apple black currant juice? Lucky was being held coy before. Like he had this shit eating grin on his face. Like he's trying to stitch us up. I don't think this is alcohol. This is just juice. Whoa, what's going on there? <laughs> okay, that's really, I'll have to taste it again. I wasn't expecting that. I think this is delicious, but it's a little bit uncanny. It's a little bit uncouth. It's sweet. There's not much more I can say about that. It's, it's a sweet red, light red. Possibly Lambrusco, possibly. I think that's kind of cool. 0% ABV. Uh, as a result, I would like 24 of them and they're worth $3 each. It's like Ribena. I can scale this. It doesn't taste like there's booze in it. Yum, but not fucking wine. <laughs> That's a really interesting wine. I have no clue what it is. I only have a hint. It is so uncouth. It'll be up there with like, you know, top three most weird wines. I want to know why they've added sugar to it or left it in there um, because it is a fascinating little number. Delicious nonetheless. Cool. Let's see what the guys think. Cool. More wine. Heaps. Some reds, one white, and something that's disappeared now. Um, I so preferred this from last week. Like last week we had a like so like it was white galore. Yeah. Yeah. Gentlemen, what <laughs> what did we think of the first wine here in front of us? <laughs> Is this the one? No, I did buy twelve. I bought twelve of this one. Yeah. Yeah. That was pretty good. Yeah, it felt like a good little uh, Victorian kind of Pinot. Yeah, but I thought it was about forty bucks. What, what do we got? Good. Luclin. Definitely Pinot territory then. <laughs> Man, it must be some good match if it's sixty-six bucks. Whoa! Trousseau! <laughs> oh, hey, this is the nicest trousseau I've tried. Just in general. <laughs> wow, okay, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> kind of weird, not Pinot, not Grenache, yeah, Trousseau makes a bit of sense. Um, yeah, cool. if y'all don't know what Trousseau is, it's a, a native Juran variety, and we're having it from the Arbois and Jura, so um, not really crew, but this regional. Took the yep. words right out of my mouth, I was about to go something <laughs> in there. Um, yeah, Femme Chateau that makes some really good kind of oh, not so natty 
like Jura because I think a lot of the imports that we see in Australia from Jura are quite hardcore to the left. Yeah. Uh, this one's kind of a bit more centrist. Number two, good new style Australian Syrah. Reveal your secret. What did you grab? Three, three bottles, three bottles, 55. So, I thought it was Baller. Okay. I thought it was around 30 bucks. Lachlan, reveal your secrets. It's Baller? Baller. It's Baller? That, that explains it. Oak, gonna oak be, money, man. These are going to be cheap. Oak money. No. Why is that Berg? No. That's heresy. Appalachian Coat Door. It's Berg. Oh my god. That's Pinot? Really? This is 2018 Pino? was a hot year, so that kind of makes a bit of sense. I, I almost made it look like Barossa Shiraz, man. That's fucking, that's hey, not a little give bit Give it hot. a bit of credit, like Adelaide Hills Shiraz. <laughs> that's, wow, okay. That is like, that is like a, the year usually of... Pinot swallows oak, but it's maybe they really double hit it. Maybe this is that double barrel sort of dealio. Yeah. The year of me guessing Pinot, and I haven't guessed Pinot on the <laughs> second one in. <laughs> well, look, that's not very yeah. typical Pinot. Like, all the things I was describing. Yeah. And if it's not going, and if you're not going like, damn, that is Pinot. If you aren't, if, if that's not the first thing that's Agreed. coming out of the glass, you're like, damn, it's Pinot, and it's Berg, there's something, there's something to write. Yeah, well, yeah, if, it, if, you, if not... you're not screaming, oh, it's Pinot, and you've just spent $110 on a bottle of Berg, you're probably going to be a bit upset. Number three. Well, wasn't this a good deal of fun? Yes, is awesome. This is so much fun, hey? Bubblegum. Yeah. Yep. yep. Bubblegum, nah, high acid. In particular, yep. the lollies formerly known as Redskins. Dude. Where we go? Mm. 545. Mm. 30. That's, that's sitting pretty penny. What have we got? 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 Ah. Hey! Nice! This is cool! Welcome to the shack. This is looking really, really, really good. Yeah. Chacarilla. Last time I, I encountered this, it was um, uh, just as just as delicious, but it was a little bit deeper, a little bit richer. Mm. You know, whereas this is like just bright and fun and vivacious. That's cool. So, so how do you pronounce that variety? Is it Chacarello. Chacarello. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. So Kona yeah. Boys, our good friends in the Clare Valley, they are the stalwart producers of Chacarello in Australia because there's only one. Uh, <laughs> that I know of, at least. Yeah, and they've just championed Corsican varieties. They, particularly Bermentino, that's one of their main things, but they've got a small, obscure planting of it. Uh, it's delicious. It's really good. Uh, again, you can't really go wrong with too many can of wines, uh, and this is no exception. No, oh, yeah, great one. Brilliant. Yeah, all about it. Number four. Pretty serious. Um, pretty hectic. Um, pretty hectic. Pretty, like, big, jammy. Um, I think I was initially, like, really taken by it, but then I was like, no, oh, it feels like a cool it's little coat to ride. Lucky. Let's log. How much is it? Exactly. Bang right on. Down. 42. 42. Bang 42. on. Oh, you go. Hey, Rodder. Oh, sick. Oh, it's Tempranillo. Tempranillo. There you go. There you go. There you go. Oak. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Good. Yeah. Good oak. Uh, Tempranillo is one of those varieties I think needs a bit of oak if you're going to make it and serious. I would wonder whether or not there's a bit of American oak there because Tempranillo, like Rioja, is yeah. known for its use of American oak. Yeah. Uh, it's a big part of the style. A Rod is a fantastic winemaker and yeah. he doesn't really break style. He yeah. really honest style. Um, and at 42, a wine with that much oak, I'd start to go. There's probably a bit, he's probably gone down the American path, and it looks great because Tempranillo with American oak looks yeah. great because it looks like Rioja. Yeah, it's that's cool. what he does. He's a respectful winemaker and just goes celebrates region variety and uh, tradition as well. And I believe made in a mental asylum. What? The wine is made oh, in a mental oh, asylum. Oh, it's Beechworth. It is. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah, because he's based in Beechworth. It's probably like an old like uh, prison hospital. Yeah, right. Yeah, like Ned Kelly spec kind of shit. Yeah. Cool. Um, but yeah, all, outside outside of this, he makes some of the country's you know. best Chardonnays and stuff like that. But oh, yeah, it's cool great. wine. Oh, it was cool wine. Number five. Speaking of cool wine. Uh, skinsy, aromatic, something or other. Gewürztraminer, a musket, whether Viognier, Riesling, something like that. What I is gotta it? know, I gotta know, what is it? How much is it? It's up there. That's less than 80. It's up there. Is it in a stumpy bottle? No, it's not, but it is. SB68. So it's the well, uh, Occupinti. So it's the, uh, the O in Cos. Justo Occupinti's uh, niece, I believe, is uh, Ariana Occupinti. Mm. Um, and this is SB68, which is Musket of Alexandria. Mm. Um, uh, and sometimes I believe it is, it's a Bianco, it is blended. Um, and I think with Caracante. But this is like the entry level uh, Bianco. Punch is high, and I believe at 50, how much did you say? 55? 55. It's come up in price. They used to be in the 30s. And her, her wines overall are amazing. Those single mm. vineyard frappados are fucking incredible. Yeah. But yeah, no. really cool. And uh, the last drink. 
It's completely finished. Yeah. What was wrong with this? It was sweet. It wasn't wine. There was nothing wrong with it. What do you mean it wasn't wine? Uh, that was fruit juice. That was 0% ABV. That was $3 a pop top and I'd have 24 of them. How do you know this? That, what do you mean? How do I know this? <laughs> I drank it. There's no it. booze in it. <laughs> but it didn't smell, it smelled like wine. It smelled like apple black currant juice. It's Nippy's apple black currant juice, 100%. Bullshit. Yes. Guaranteed. What are you talking about? You can put vodka in it. Oh, yeah, we could do that. That'd be fun. Yeah. I bought like three bottles of it and what I was did like 30 you, bucks. What did I you bought a case what? of water. I, I thought it was Lambrusco. Yeah. <laughs> what, what was this? I mean, I was I was prepared to drop 30 bucks a bottle for this. No, you, I, you have to be taking the Dude, piss. look. No. It was serious. It's been caught on camera too. What was it? I did. Oh, it's right, Fuck. <laughs> Fuck. It, it's every wine mixed together with right <laughs> Are you fucking serious? <laughs> every every one of these mixed together. I, right so in. I sculled this. Same. And I was like, and I walked out of here. I was like, that better not be wine because I don't want to get drunk. And then I walked out. I was like, I kind of feel a little bit like, you know, like a little bit how you going. It tasted like wine, but it was sweet. And I reckon I've got a fucking bargain. $30 a bottle. <laughs> I'd still pay 30 bucks a bottle for that. I reckon that's fantastic. I want to know what the ABV is. It's a cooler. It's technically that's what it is. It's, it's a cooler. cooler. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. fun. It's non South Coast cooler. It's not, yeah, non vintage. Um, <laughs> uh, well, that was fun. Field plan. Was, field plan. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was fun. Cool. Uh, well, let's drink some Ribena and have a good time tonight. Yeah. Thanks, Lockie. Lesson learned. Cheers.